Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. This one is a third type of writing task one in the academic writing. So uh, this one is a process uh, slash cycle. We're gonna be covering how to write these things. Before we continue, please, if you are not subscribed already, please do so, hit that button. And at the end of the video, if you liked it, if you learned something, please hit that like button. It really helps us with the with the algorithm. And please let us know and down in the comments on what you thought about the, uh, the video. So basically, let us know. Let us hear your voice um, regarding the videos or anything. So yeah, just interact with us as much as you can. It will really, really help us. So as I said, um, this type of writing is a process slash cycle. So what they are are basically what you see here is a is a circle of process uh, in which cans are recycled. So from the very first step where the lady disposes the cans all the way to the end where the cans are reused uh, through the process of recycling. Uh, this is a process. And what cycle is? Cycle is basically a never ending cycle. It like, for example, evaporation of water and then goes to the air. There's condensation, uh, clouds are formed. There is precipitation that comes down, the rain comes down. And it's uh, the same thing happens over again. Like, you know, uh, it just, you know, uh, comes to the very beginning, goes to the end, just over and over and over again. Uh, regardless of that, they are the same thing basically and uh, just like any picture in writing task one, you have the prompt where the task tells you what you need to do and then you're reminded that you have 20 minutes and you're supposed to write at least 150 words minimum for, uh, for task one. So basically, um, many things are the same. The, the draft that you're given is the same. The amount of time that you're kind of expected to um, uh, spent in order to write your writing task one and the number of words which is the same thing in every type of writing in task one 150 words uh, minimum so what you're given here says the picture below shows how metal cans are recycled this is the prompt that we're given um, regardless of what the picture is whether it's a trend like a graph or or, or a picture anything the first paragraph is the same in all of them which includes if you remember from our previous videos it's the paraphrasing of the prompts and the overview of the picture so once again the same picture that we saw in the previous page the picture below shows how metal cans are recycled so intro is the same across all types of pictures. It's a paraphrasing of this and an overview of the entire picture. So paraphrasing, uh, as we have already covered, is just a reminder. Paraphrasing is like a, a change of verbiage and the vocabulary of what you're given so that you're not like merely copy pasting what the exam gives you. So uh, instead of like the picture, you can say the diagram or the illustration instead of show you can use the word display or or this like illustrates or enumerates um so you change the verbiage you change the vocabulary so as you know uh, not to be the same as the draft here in processes and cycles the overview can be a brief description of how many steps it involves so one of one of the uh, questions i get is like how do we write the overview like, what am I supposed to write as a general trend, as an overview here? One of the things you can do as a base um, method is you write how many stages there are involved in the process slash cycle. So you can just, you know, basically uh, count the number of stages and write in an overview. We can see there are n number of stages involved and so on and so forth. So this is the easiest overview you can get. Well, it is, this is not the only method, but it is the easiest. We'll get to uh, more methods probably in uh, later videos. Okay, so here we see the same picture, right? The same picture of recycling cans and so on. And I've written a an introduction uh, for, this, uh, for this particular writing. Um, the presented diagram illustrates the process in which metal cans are recycled for reuse. So this is a mere paraphrase of this. So the picture below shows how metal cans are recycled. The presented diagram illustrates the process in which metal cans are recycled for reuse. So I've changed the verbiage, I've changed the, the vocabulary. 
the picture below the presented diagram instead of that uh, shows illustrates how metal cans are recycled shows the or the illustrates the process in which metal cans are recycled for reuse so it's a longer sentence it's um it's majorly changed in some aspects so it is not a mere copy paste of what, what i'm given right so this is uh, paraphrasing and once again uh, if you don't know what what exactly is done in the paraphrasing please uh watch the previous videos i have uh, basically um i provided how you can write uh, a paraphrasing of of task one writing so please if you haven't watched that please uh click here and watch the video and get back to this video this is a general trend or an overview in a quick look we can see that there are five recycling stages involved in between disposal of cans and their availability for reuse so here very simply we have talked about how many stages there are and if you paid attention there are seven stages of course and i've written that there are five recycling stages in between disposal of cans so disposal of cans here and their reavailability here and there are five stages in between in which the cans go through before they're able to be reused um so yeah this is it and there's the paraphrasing which we've covered before and the overview very simply can be about how many stages there are overly or maybe in between the first and the last part so it's up to you i will get into more details of how these are written in the future videos but for now this this will do so we have a picture you can see that there's a there's a draft um the figures below show how industrial bricks are made so we can see the process right so before we uh we write anything we see the picture itself how many stages there are and what directions and we need to see uh where the stages go like we it has gone from the left to the right from the you can see that there's a digger and this right here what uh, is clay and after that roller metal grid sand water wire cutter bricks mold and then goes here dive drying oven and uh here and then here and then here so you need to pay attention because there are uh, these arrows that help you uh, um, with with where the processes uh, go to like uh, you, you just you don't confuse yourself look at the arrows see where they're going so if you see this arrow the next stage is now this one is this one and then this and then this so uh, really pay attention to where the arrows go so as not to confuse yourself because if you like you know if you confuse it the entire writing will be wrong the processes or the stages will be in the wrong location so you will lose a very large chunk of score and your uh, task response basically so um we have this picture and we have a uh like a brief summary we have a summary of how this picture can be written and take a look at here the pictures below illustrate the process of brick making in construction industry so paraphrasing overall it can be seen that there are seven stages involved altogether and it is obvious that the process where bricks are heated is the longest of them all so not only we have written how many stages there are we've also written about the like the most significant feature if you remember it is really important to write about the most significant feature like the longest the biggest uh, the largest the most substantial and here we've also included that the that the where uh, the bricks are heated is the longest stage of the entire diagram um now here it's a um, it, it's a body it is not a complete description of this process but if you take a look at the bolded words initially a digger is used to gather large chunks of clay from the ground which is this picture then the gathered clay is poured onto a metal grid which is this one the process ensures that the only that only the smaller pieces of clay are left on the roller so that it's easier to process so this is a further explanation of why this happens like for example the me the metal grid is there so that it ensures the you know the smaller pieces of clay are left here not the bigger chunks in the next stage the processed sand is mixed with water to create mud 
Then, the mud can either go through a machine to be formed into a large rectangle shape here. A wire cutter is used to cut the formed material into bricks. During this stage, the mud can also go into the mold to come out as a different type of brick. What you've seen here is a brief representation of what needs to be done. Now we're in the main part. So what do we need to do when we are given a process slash cycle? The first thing you need to know that there are sequencers to them. Sequencers basically tell you where you are in the process. Basically, there are, there are three um, separate locations where you are. Uh, one is the very beginning, two is the middle, and three is the very end. So we have the very beginning and the very end, and we have the in-bits vein, right? So we need to talk about the sequencers. We need to sequence what we're talking about. Now, if you've seen the bold awards here, initially, then, in the next stage, then, during this stage, are all sequencers. They're words that are used to talk about the stage we're in, what happens after the stage that we've just talked about, what happens at the very end, what happens at the very beginning. So we need to kind of display where in the process we're talking about so as not to confuse the reader. So sequencers are one thing we use. Um, the other one, if you paid attention, is all the sentences that are used here are in passive voice. A digger is used. Uh, clay is poured. The process scent is mixed with water. So passive voice is here. We use it in process slash cycle because we don't care about who does it. Of course, workers and everybody, yes, but that is not the focus of our writing. The focus of our writing is about what is done, rather who does it. So the voice needs to be passive plus use of sequencers. If you take a look at here, I've provided some sequencers for you. So uh, the very beginning stage, you can use first or firstly initially to start to begin with. The, you know, the in between, we can use afterwards at the next stage, the next stage following this, meanwhile, simultaneously. And we can also use prior to before that, which is used when you're talking about like what happens to the process before a stage begins. Like, for example, I don't know, let's say uh, you see the grinder here, like before the grinding happens, like prior to the grinding, something else, like there's a, like heated, something is heated, right? And eventually at the end and finally, you're used to kind of uh, talk about the last sequence or last stage. Um, if you've seen, uh, if you pay attention here, we have meanwhile, simultaneously, concurrently, and during this process. So what, when we use these sequencers, we're talking about like a, like an action happening at the same stage or the same time of another action. Like, I don't know, whatever, for example, you, you are, I don't know, um, let's say heating your cement and then in the, se in the same sequence or in the same stage, something else is also happening. You use these words like meanwhile or simultaneously something else is being done so sequences are here and these are enough to kind of you so you can get by with these and um uh, if you look at this picture there are two illustrations a cement production and concrete production and this is the prompt the diagrams below show the stages and equipment used in the cement making process and how cement is used to produce concrete for building purposes. So this is what we have been given. And this right here is, a, is an introduction. What do we do first? Paraphrase. The given illustration displays the process of making cement and concrete and types of machines used during the procedure. As can be seen, there are four main steps in the making of cement out of limestone and clay, and one big step for making concrete by mixing several materials together. So this is the you know, uh, introduction and you can just continue uh, writing about what is done and basically you can take a look at where the, uh, where the arrows are, limestone clay crusher and just goes to the mixer, the mixer goes to the rotating heater and uh, you know, don't forget about the powder here. So just talk about what is happening. Um, let me tell you something, many parts of these writings are not very self-explanatory so you just get confused as to what is happening in the pictures but you know you can get by and talk about what is kind of happening by by looking at the picture there's the powder that comes out 
because there's a crusher it kind of crushes the limestone and then there's a mixture is mixed with uh, whatever there is and the, there's a heater so you can get by even though the picture might look a little bit confusing but after you know some time that you put into the picture you can easily figure out what is happening so two things sequencers need to be used in writings of cycles and you know processes and the voice needs to be massive okay so that's it uh this was very brief very summarized but down in the comments i want you to attempt this picture um and i will personally look at them and you know give you the feedback so uh you can see that you know there's a cycle begins from number one all the way to number seven it's a process of honey production by the bees right so attempt this down in the comments write your introduction write your body paragraph and i will give you the feedback myself and i'll catch you guys in the next one good luck